Hi everyone, Gideon Cordova here with your Council Roundup for Monday the 7th of November 2022. This is our first Council meeting back since the election and it's been a great privilege and honour to be re-elected to the Council and so we've just had our first meeting back. What's the Council Roundup? Well this is my opportunity to let you know what I thought were some of the highlights and maybe the lowlights of the most recent Council meeting. And you can always follow along with the council meeting agenda and minutes. They're all available on the Kingborough Council website. And you can also go to YouTube where the council meetings are live, live streamed. So you can go back and watch the full council meeting or all the individual pieces that you're interested in by going to Kingborough Council's YouTube channel or just follow along with the Kingborough Council Facebook page. So starting off in this first meeting back on the 7th of November, I asked some questions without notice. The first one was about the seawall, planning for a seawall at Blackman's Bay Beach. And really this is about erosion control and talking about what are some of the options for mitigating erosion that's taking place at Blackman's Bay Beach. The second question I asked was about a tourism marketing strategy. And you can read more about that on page 24 of the Kingborough Council annual report. The next question I asked was about the local historic heritage code. This is the idea that Kingborough Council uh, is to prepare a local historic heritage code to protect the historic cultural heritage significance of places, precincts and landscapes. And finally, I asked a question about the COP27 climate conference that's just about to take place in Egypt. And the question was really around what is Kingborough Council doing to leverage that climate conference uh, we know that the newly elected, uh, re-elected Lord Mayor of Hobart is actually going over to Egypt to talk about climate and put Hobart on the on the world stage. Kingborough is part of Greater Hobart. Um, it was a question around what is Kingborough Council doing in, in that space to leverage off the back of that uh, very important conference. And um, more broadly, I, I'd like to start asking about um, the Community Resilience Working Group and some of the other climate change initiatives that we're doing, but more on that later, because we did talk about waste management and waste avoidance and reduction uh, a lot in this meeting. Really pleased that um, we welcomed the, the new four councillors. Uh, that was one of the um, the certificate of election is the official title of that. And then we had the appointment to special committee. So I'm very pleased to have been re-elected to be the Kingborough Council's representative on the Tasmanian Polar Networks. So this is an organisation that advocates for the Antarctic and Southern Ocean industries. And Kingborough is really resplendent with a lot of different organisations that support our Antarctic and Southern Ocean sector. It's not just the Australian Antarctic Division, the AAD, that is based in Kingborough, but so many different businesses and enterprises that really help um, not just the Australian contingent, but people from all over the world as they as they go into Antarctica and the Southern Oceans to do their, their research, their science and their work. And of course, as we know, the currency of Antarctic, um, of the currency of Antarctica really is science and research. So it's an enormous, um, it's an enormous thing that Kingborough uh, has has that that access as as really what I see to be the gateway to the Southern Oceans and to Antarctica. So I was pleased to be reappointed to Tasmanian Polar Networks, as well as being elected the proxy to the mayor on the Copping Refuse Site Joint Disposal Authority and Copping Sea Cell. So the mayor is the is the main representative of the council on that on that uh, authority. Um, and the general manager sits there as well. And I've now been appointed to be a proxy. So that's really good because I'm very interested in waste avoidance, um, circular economy. Uh, basically, this is our main climate change issue here in Kingborough is that of the council's carbon emissions, it turns out that when we changed all the LED, the lights, the street lights to LED, that was something like 1.6% of our carbon emissions as a council. But when it comes to waste to landfill, that's about 93% of all of Kingborough Council's carbon emissions are coming from waste to landfill. So we really do need to fix that. And so on that point, in order to try and fix that, I moved a motion for a workshop to be held with the new councillors, as well as the uh, newly re-elected councillors, uh, to look into what council's doing with regards to waste reduction and what are our targets uh, and also what expectations will there be for councillors as we move towards the budget period? What are the kind of asks that there will be? What are the initiatives that will require resourcing? Very unfortunately, that did not pass. And you can go back to the YouTube channel from the Kingborough Council to see exactly what the argumentation was both for and against. Sadly, the, the vote came in 4-4 and in the case of council meetings when a motion is voted on, if the motion lands 
as a tie, then it falls in the negative. So in this case, we actually had 10 councillors, but two were away today. So there were only eight councillors there and the vote was four in favour of my motion uh, to, to talk about waste reduction. And then there were four votes against and therefore it fell in the negative. So it did not pass. Now, that was disappointing, but the whole point about being on council is being able to work well, work collaboratively and, and listen to other people's perspectives and but also you know to really pursue our what what I believe to be a, a fundamentally important agenda which is to tackle the climate crisis in meaningful ways and to respond meaningfully to a, an emergency and a crisis that is the, the the climate emergency and the biodiversity emergency one of the ways that we know that we can achieve some meaningful climate action is to reduce our waste to landfill really what I wanted to do by moving this motion to put a workshop on for councillors uh, before the budget period was really to highlight to the community, to meet community expectations, to show that the, the community can have confidence that as a council, we're interested in, in waste reduction and avoidance, and that as a council, we um, stand ready to meet our commitments, uh, which have now been mandated by motion of council to be a net zero emissions council by the year 2035. Now, I believe we can do that. I believe it's fundamentally important that we achieve that as a council. And despite this small hurdle, little setback, not to worry, we'll get back up and we'll try again. We're going to make sure that the issue of waste reduction is on the agenda and remains one of one of the things that the council is really able to kick some goals and achieve our targets that, that we promised the community that we would meet. The other issues on the agenda tonight uh, included um, signing some leases um, with the Channel Football Club club rooms at Snug Oval, uh, transfer of asset to council, and you can read all about that on the council agenda and the council minutes, uh, as well as watching the YouTube channel. So there was also the um, community grants, and it's such an uplifting opportunity every time you see what are some of the um, the, the people who are applying, the community organisations, th these organisations that do incredible work throughout our municipality. And so I really encourage you to, to jump online and also encourage your your the organisations that you know, your friends, family, networks, let them know about the opportunities that come with Kingborough Council grants. Um, jump on the Kingborough Council website and take a look because we know that there's a myriad of organisations out there who are doing incredible things and could use a leg up. So if they haven't availed themselves already of those opportunities that are provided by Kingborough Council community grants, jump on the website, check out the eligibility criteria and get involved because council really is here to help out the community and keep the community at the heart of everything we do. It's great to be back. Uh, as I said earlier, it's an enormous privilege and an honour, but also a terrific challenge. And I'm going to be working hard as I always do. And I'm going to keep you informed every step of the way. So if you need anything, get in touch. Let me know. GideonCordover.com.au is where you can find me. And I'll see you at the next Council Roundup. Have a good night, everyone. Authorised by G Cordover, Tasmanian Greens, Hobart. Over and then Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Mayor. My first question is about, and just while I find that, let me also welcome all the, the new members that we have. It's great to see all of them here today. My first question is about Blackman's Bay Beach and seawall planning. Um, please may we have an update about the time frame for potential replacement or repair of the footpath uh, and the construction of a seawall at Blackman's Bay Beach. And more broadly, what are the plans for erosion control at Blackman's Bay Beach? Mm. Oh, anyone? Mr Smee can help us with that one. Uh, through you, Mayor, we have commissioned a report that has done an assessment of the uh, risk posed in relation to the coastal erosion that's occurring there. Um, that has provided us with some options. Uh, at this stage, we haven't committed to any of those options. The, the path is currently stable and we are monitoring that. So we don't have a locked in um, plan, but we do have options available to us to consider. Um, but our, our primary um, action at this stage is simply to, to monitor the situation and if if it appears to be worsening, then we do have the information available to act. Can I just clarify, Councillor Cordover, are you talking about the Suncoast track or actually at Blackman's Bay Beach, alongside the beach? My understanding was that there was plans for a repair or replacement of 
some of the footpath at the southern end of the beach and potentially a seawall at that location, but I'm not familiar with the plans for the, the exact location of the seawall. Thank you. My second question through you, Mayor, is about the, uh, it relates to the annual report. It mentions in the annual report the tourism marketing strategy. Um, so it's page 24 of the annual report. It actually appears in this agenda on page 75. Yeah. It says that um, Destination Southern Tasmania, the Huon Valley Council and the tourism industry will work together to develop a tourism marketing strategy for the region south of Hobart and that this project is, quote, ongoing. So my question is, is there any update on an expected time frame for that piece of work? And when it is completed, how will we determine if it's been a success or value for money? Dr Fox, are you able to help us with this one, please? Okay. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take it on notice, Councillor. I, um, while I have been very much engaged with Destination Southern Tasmania over a couple of years now, I'm not quite sure where that project sat, so I'll have to come back to you on that. That's okay, thank you for that. Um, my penultimate question is about the local historic heritage code. Um, apparently that's on an ongoing piece of work as well. So this is the idea of um, preparing a local historic heritage code to protect the historic cultural heritage significance of places, precincts and landscapes. Um, is there any update on, on where that's at? And again, when it is completed, what kind of community consultation or feedback? Um, what's that community engagement process. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Ms Tullamore. Uh, through you, Mayor, there's an existing heritage code within the planning scheme which lists um, properties. It is most certainly due for update. Um, so when we go to the new planning scheme, it will have some updates in terms of details of the existing listings. There is definitely work to be done in terms of new listings uh, and some work had been started but due to resourcing, um, we have not been able to proceed that project. Thank you. And through you, Mayor, final question. Uh, the re-elected Lord Mayor Anna Reynolds in Hobart City Council uh, will promote Hobart on the world stage this month uh, when she speaks at the COP27 Climate Change Summit in Egypt that we've just heard about from, from a question from the audience, um, from the gallery today. Does Kingra have any plans to leverage the COP conference by sharing information about our climate action initiatives uh, in the wake of the COP conference or are we doing any kind of activation around the COP27 conference. Obviously, I, I doubt that anybody's going over there to Egypt. I can assure you, nobody from here okay. is travelling to Egypt. That's okay. Uh, General Manager. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, the short answer to your question, Council Cordova, is no. Um, however, that said, um, as you know, through our uh, Hobart City Deal partnership, um, we are in regular contact with the Lord Mayor and, uh, and the the CEO of the City of Hobart, and uh, we'll be seeking um, whatever material they're able to access uh, at that conference and uh, make that available to councillors. Thank you. Uh, we turn now to page 16, new sublease to Snug Cricket Club Incorporated and the Channel Junior Football Club Incorporated at the Snug Oval with a recommendation on page 17. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder, please. Moved, Councillor Cordova. Seconded. Councillor Midgley, thank you. Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. So we're looking here to approve the sublease for the Snug Cricket Club and the Channel Junior Football Club uh, at the Snug Oval for the change rooms and club rooms. Um, it's currently owned by the Crown and leased to the Kingra Council. And so this request has come through for a transfer of ownership. Um, we've actually already looked at the transfer of ownership of Snug Oval and the nearby Memorial Hall, and that was submitted to the Crown as, and is expected to be approved. Um, so this fits nicely in tandem with that, and I think it's a logical uh, extension of that, and, and we've just actually talked about that at item 21 in this agenda. So the Snug Cricket Club and the Channel Junior Football Club have sought a new sublease from Council for a period of five years. What I think is very appealing about this is that Council will be providing, if this passes, a peppercorn rental would apply to the, for the term of the sublease. Um, the two clubs will undertake a seasonal rotation uh, of using the snug oval facilities and therefore the, the sublease takes the form of a tripartite agreement with the council. Um, the, the clubs have been using the facilities on an annual grounds usage agreement up until this point of time. I think it, it's a testament to council's ability to lean in and help out local sporting clubs. They provide great health and well-being, as we all know, to our community. And they also develop a sense of place and a sense of identity, which I think is very good, particularly for young people, but of course for people of all ages as well. And I think um, this bodes uh, well as a... Yeah, I think this is a, a good move and a logical extension to the previous uh, agenda item. So I commend the motion. Thanks, Mayor. 
Thank you, Councillor. We now turn to page 22, notices of motion, and Councillor Cordover has submitted a notice of motion headed workshop on waste reduction, and there is an officer's response from Mr Reeve. So, Councillor Cordover, do you wish to move that motion? Yes, please. Thank you. And do I have a seconder for that motion, please? And a seconder in Councillor Midgley. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. In August of 2022, councillors were indeed provided with a presentation by the section head waste levy and data from the Department of Natural Resources and Environment, formerly the EPA, on the Waste and Resource Recovery Act, followed by a presentation from representatives of Urban EP based in Melbourne. Councils learned about the state government's draft of the waste strategy required to be provided to the minister by the 29th of September, which was six months from the commencement of that act. And we also learned about the Waste and Resource Recovery Board, which was established on the 1st of July this year. We were told that the level of waste reduction within this first three years will be absolutely critical to how we go with any kind of carbon emissions reduction. So that's why I wanted to put this issue back on the agenda right now, early in this new term of council. Fully 40% of our councillors on our council did not attend that workshop, of course, they were not yet elected. And so they weren't privy to that information. And yet they will, like all of us, in the upcoming budget process, be required to make decisions that may or may not directly impact our ability to reach our climate change net zero uh, carbon emissions target by 2035. Now, the pathway for Kingborough to reduce waste to landfill is, as we as we know, uh, reduced food and kitchen waste, garden waste, paper and cardboard, other organic materials like nappies and animal waste, clothing and textiles and timber. We can expand and upgrade services delivered via the curbside and transfer stations. We can help the community change their behaviour. We can find opportunities to collaborate at a regional and state level with the Southern Tasmanian Waste Management Group. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things we can do in terms of diverting waste that's going to the wrong waste stream putting it into the correct waste stream. But to achieve all of this, the councillors actually need a clear-eyed view of what this is all about. We all need to be on the same page. We need to know about that 35-page Kingborough Council waste avoidance and reduction paper that six of the councillors know about, but four do not. Uh, we need to know about the relationship between the climate change plan that Kingborough Council has and the 2017 waste management strategy submission to Kingborough Council that was provided by MRA Consulting. Councillors need to know about Urban EP's work uh, and specific milestones. And as councillors, we all need to have oversight to ensure that this work stays on track and is appropriately resourced. So we need to know if that state government uh, draft waste strategy was indeed presented to the minister. We need to know if it was indeed shown to the public beforehand, as was the intention. Uh, we need to know how much money we expect to receive from the waste levy as a council and what we should expect to be asked to spend that money on in the future. Um, will that money, like with other pools of money, will it be left to accumulate um, for a certain amount of time before being spent? If that's the case, how long will that take and how much money will we allow to accumulate from the waste levy before we start spending it? These are the, some of the things that a workshop will be able to identify. In my opinion, more important than the nuts and bolts of the state government and the regional uh, body, that Southern Tasmanian Waste Management Group, more important than those initiatives, what I'd like out of a workshop early in this new term is to alert councillors on this council to our specific initiatives and what are the funding requirements that we expect? What are the elements that are currently funded and for how long are they funded? Should we expect funding requests in order to progress this work at budget time? If so, let's make those expectations clear now so that there won't be any kind of sticker shock or any kind of um, uh, expectation management issues so that all councillors, when we get to budget time, we actually know what's going on with waste because fundamentally 93% of all Kingborough Council's carbon emission equivalent is coming from waste to landfill. So that's a really key piece of the puzzle for us to meet our net zero emissions target by 2035. We actually have to tackle waste. It's the single biggest piece of the puzzle. And I think all councillors uh, would benefit from knowing, from knowing about that and knowing what council's already doing and what the, we, the councillors, will be asked of when it comes to budget time in order to achieve that meaningful climate action. So the workshop in August of 2022 was useful, but now we have nearly, you know, nearly half of the councillors are new. And the workshop last time did not tell us how much money the council is expected to pay in order to achieve our targets. How much do we need to invest, by when, which elements are currently funded and for how long? These are the, the kinds of information that a workshop could tell us. Um, last time the workshop didn't tell us um, what those budget expectations will be. And I think going around the table now, 
you know, if we were to hold the budget workshop tomorrow, what would we actually expect to, to spend on waste? Would it be 10,000? Would it be a million? Would it be nothing? We actually don't yet know, and that's, I think, what a workshop could achieve, or what I hope a workshop to achieve. So I really hope that I've um, made clear the fact that this won't necessarily be a duplication of what the six of us councillors who are incumbents already know, but it, it may very well cover some of that ground. But most importantly, it's about putting this issue firmly on the agenda at Time. the early part of council. Thanks. Councillor Cordova, did you want to sum up? Thank you, Mayor. I think it's been a robust debate and a good one. Um, as we kind of talked about, we need to really figure out whether Council's waste avoidance and reduction program is just chugging along. Is it a set and forget kind of thing, in which case that's fine? Or if there are asks that will emerge at budget time, then councillors really need to be across this issue. And, and the overhead slides really actually don't cut it. They're basically just you know speaking points, dot points. They actually have no context and they, they really don't make sense unless you have somebody talk, talk you through it. Um, if there was a budget, wor a budget workshop tomorrow, um, are there, is there an expectation that councillors will need to make decisions relating to actually funding waste reduction and avoidance? If so, what are they, how much and when? Um, I, I reiterate the debates around the table that actually it does not need to happen before Christmas, of course. Um, it just needs to happen before the budget, so it needs to happen probably before March, April of next year. Uh, this will give an opportunity to both new and returned councillors a clear view of what decisions they will likely be called upon to make with respect to waste reduction in terms of budgeting. Uh, and importantly, the reason why I brought it to the, to the council is that this, rather than just sending an email to the mayor, um, which I do appreciate I could have done, is because I want to make it clear to the community and give the community confidence that this council takes waste reduction seriously and reaffirm our commitment as a council in the public eye to meeting our council's widely publicised climate action targets. And I do take Councillor Fox's point that it's a broad issue, but taking, for example, the streetlights, which we switched out to LEDs, that was 1.6% of our carbon emissions, whereas 93% of our carbon emissions is waste to landfill. So that's why this is a topic of discussion. That's why this needs to have a workshop. And that's why I really want to progress this early in our term of council to show the community that we mean business when it comes to waste reduction. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cordova. I'm going to put the motion now, moved by Councillor Cordova, seconded by Councillor Midgley. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Okay, a show of hands is required. All those in favour? Is Councillors Fox, Cordova, Dean and Midgley. Those against? Is Councillors Antoli, Bain, Richardson and Reet. So the motion is lost. Um, there will be an induction session for the new members in relation to that issue, please be assured. Um, the